Hello and welcome to episode three of the War Poetry Vlog. Um, today we're going to be concentrating on two early classic First World War war poets, um, Wilfred Owen and Rupert Brooke. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, five poems, all caught, based in 1914, just before his death from Rupert Brooke. Um, and then I'll, I'll do two or three early Wilfred Owens, including his most famous one, Dolce and Decorum Est, Latin title. Um, okay, I have a new innovation to a little bit of theme music introduction. The mighty Chumbawamba, uh, much, much missed. Um, a narco punk band famous in the UK for their one hit single, which was uh, Tub Thumping. Um, but they were a great folk band, um, a really, um, really great folk band. So do check out Chumbawamba. That's taken from their English folk songs or rebel songs, 13 something to 1918. Uh, so there's lots of uh, reinterpretations of classic folk songs, including one sung by the soldiers that, as you heard, was uh, very cynical, um, which is interesting because um, it was actually written during the war and um, was cynical already about the war, which most people, uh, most historians think, didn't really come until the tide of of soldier poets in the sort of 1940s. But um, cynicism was always there in the war, as, as that song proves. I don't know whether I should rename this War, and po war, war Poetry and Songs. Um, I uh, don't know many non-First World War songs, so we'll um, leave it a bit. There's some, some classic World War I songs, though. I thought a book of sheet music of, of um, songs, poems and parodies. Uh, and the Imperial War Museum has a, a mixed di double disc of um, songs and um, reminiscences and some poetry readings, which is, of course, what I'm doing. So that crosses over nicely. So yeah, I mean, songs are only poetry set to music, aren't they? So um, we will have a few songs. Um, there's some very, very beautiful classic First World War ones, both um, contemporary and, and modern, and uh, particularly, um, yeah, uh, Australian versions. Uh, you might have heard the band play Waltz in Matilda, um, or, um, or uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's a very famous cut by the Pogues, and um, I prefer the... Um, Acoustic solo version by the mighty June Tabor, another brilliant folk artist. Anyway, enough about song, and let's get back to the poetry. Um, 
So um, I should give credit to a few people, mostly uh, Phoenix Pre Poetry Press, um, which is the hardback version of them. I have loads of Phoenix Press because they select the poets really well. Um, at this point, they've done R.S. Thomas, Christina Rossetti. I've got that. William Shakespeare, I haven't got that. Edgar Allan Poe, um, W.B. Yeats, I've got Yeats. Yeats. I've got that. Alfred Lord Tennyson, I've got that. Emily Dixonson, I've got that. Walt Whitman, I haven't got because I've got the complete Walt Whitman, of course. So, yeah, so this is Robert Brooke and Wolf of Dyer Selected Poems I'm reading from. Um, and the editor uh, is George Walter, who um, is a lecturer in English at the University of Sussex and has published widely on the poet and composer Ivor Gurney. And again, crossover composer as well as a poet. Uh, and his dates were 1890 to 1937. So we're going to look uh, at first at Rupert Brooke, uh, whose dates are 1887 to sadly 1915. Um, he was educated at Rugby and King's College, Cambridge. Um, he published verse before the war, uh, um, a uh, internationally titled uh, verse book called Poems, published in 1911. As soon as World War I broke out in August 14, he joined the Royal Naval Division and died on a ship on his way to Gallipoli, sadly, in um, 1915. Um, he uh, got septicemia very rapidly and then acutely on, on board the ship, uh, probably from a mosquito bite um, yeah, um, yeah, off, and he, he died on a, on a Greek island that they docked at. Um, which name escapes me slightly. It's a fairly obscure Greek island near, near, not too far from Gallipoli, um, which of course was a terrible bloodbath, but um, not one that Rupert Brooke saw. So he, I mean, there's quite a lot of pre-war poems in um, in this selection because um, he wrote more pre-war than pre-war than he did during the war. But he wrote one very famous um, poem in five parts, uh, simply titled again, 1914. And it's in five five parts. They're all quite short, so I will um, go through all of them uh, as I do. I've not got any water with me, um, or delicious skull crusher coffee, as are, of course the sponsors of this vlog. Um, Death before decaf and um, brilliant strong coffee, even zero THC CBD coffee, if that excites your coffee thirst or whatever. Um, I should probably go and grab mine. I will just pause and go and grab mine. Oh no, I won't pause, I'll just leave it running. Ah, it's fiddly to pause. Where is my coffee? Is it somewhere? Nearly lying around somewhere. Um, no, can't find my delicious coffee. I shall have to do with my water bottle. Okay, apologies for that. We're already on eight minutes after song and we haven't even got into the poetry, so this will be the longest ever episode so far. Three of more poetry. Um, other little plugs is watch out for Brutality in the Trenches, my um, hardback book based on my PhD thesis talking about um, prisoner killing and other lovely stuff, uh, atrocities on the Western Front committed by British troops. Okay, so back to Rupert Brooke, 1914. Verse one is entitled Peace. Now, God be thanked who has matched us with his hour and caught our youth and wakened us from sleeping. With hand made sure, clear eye and sharpened power to turn as swimmers into cleanness leaping. Glad from a world grown old and cold and weary, leave the sick hearts that honour could not move, and half men and their dirty songs and dreary, and all the little emptiness of love. O oh, we who have known shame, we have found release there, where there's no ill, no grief, but sleep has mended, nought broken save this body lost at breath, nothing to shake the laughing hearts, long peace there, but only agony, and that has ending, and the worst friend and enemy is but death. Okay, verse 2 is titled Safety. Dear, of all happy in the hour, most blessed, he who has found our hid security, assured in the dark tides of the world that rest, and heard our word, who is so safe as we? We have found safety with all things undying, 
the winds and morning, tears of men and mirth, the deep night and birds singing and clouds flying, and sleep and freedom and the autumnal earth. We have built a house that is not for time's throwing. We have gained a peace unshaken by pain forever. War knows no power, safe shall be my going, secretly armed against all death's endeavour, safe though all safety's lost, safe where men fall, and if those poor limbs die, safety is all. I absolutely adore this second verse called safety, because it um, counter counterposes um, the tragedy and the horror of war with the safety of home, but um, it's got lots of ideas therein about the release of death and um, yeah, it's, it's very um, very deep, nuanced and beautiful at the same time. Uh, speaking of which, here is verse three by Rupert Brooke of his 1914 five piece and this is titled The Dead. Blow out you bugles over the rich dead. There's none of these so lonely and poor of old. But dying has made us rarer gifts than gold. These laid the world away, poured out the red, sweet wine of youth, gave up the years to be, of work and joy and that own hopes serene. That men call age and those who would have been, their sons they gave their immortality. Sorry. Not that a bit stanzas up. Second stanza. Blow bugles blow. They brought us for our dearth. Holiness lacks so long, and love, and pain. Honour has come back as a king to earth, and paid his subjects with a royal wage. And nobleness walks in our ways again, and we have come into our heritage. Again, um, a beautiful, quite forceful poem about um, death and uh, yeah, the word I stumbled over, immortality. Uh, so yeah, very important issues. In the war, beautifully expressed by Walt Rupert Brooke in his uh, third verse of the five verse cycle titled 1914. The fourth has the same title as the third, it is called The Dead. These her hearts were woven of human joys and cares, washed marvellously with sorrow swift to mirth. The years had given them kindness, dawn was theirs and sunset, and the colours of the earth. These had seen movement, and heard music, known slumber and waking, loved, gone, proudly friended, felt the quick stir of wonder, sat alone, touched flowers and furs and cheeks. All this is ended. There were waters blown by changing winds to laughter, and lit by the rich skies all day and after. Frost, with a gesture, stays the waves that dance, and wandering lonely loveliness, he leaves a white unbroken glory, a gathered radiance, a whip, a shining peace under the night. Uh, apologies for my stumble again. Um, this this is yeah the, another counter counter piece to the third the dead poem, which was quite angry. Um, this is much more peaceful, um, accepting death, um, but still seeing the. Um, Stages of grief, so yeah, it's not known that there's five, six stages of grief. So I can't remember quite how much, but anger certainly one of them that we saw in the third, third verse. And this is fourth. The dead is sort of acceptance, um, but with other complex emotions stirred in the thing. Okay, so the fifth and last uh, verse is called the soldier. It's um, Rupert Brooks' most famous poem, um, particularly the first. Um, first four lines are um, incredibly famous and used a lot in memorial ceremonies and so forth. So I hope I do it justice and don't stumble too much. I seem to be stumbling on these today more than usual, so apologies. Verse 5 of 1914 by Rupert Brooke, The Soldier. If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam. A body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less. 
Give somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter, learn to friends and gentleness in hearts at peace under an English heaven. I think that's uh, really pure, purely beautiful. Again, sort of um, grieving, um, quite um, near colonial almost, um, claiming with your death that um, you're, you're not occupying English, but England. But um, I have to say, I have some sympathy with that. Obviously, there's a um, huge number of war memorials all over uh, the main battlefields. Not so many in Gallipoli. I mean, they tend to be repatriated. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's thousands of Turkish and uh, Allied troops, Australians, of course, famously a large presence at uh, Gallipoli. Um, but Rupert Brooke didn't make it. Um, so yes, I think um, claiming Englishness, not Britishness, no, so we have uh, English, sorry, Scots and Welsh and Irish who all served with us, and of course all of the other nations of the Allied and uh, uh, German forces, and other Axis, Axis forces you might call them. So yeah, uh, it's a beautiful moving poem, and I think the claiming the Englishness of your grave is fair play because there are so many graves and there's so many missing, uh, so many unknown bodies uh, are in France and Belgium particularly. Um, so yeah, they are maintained by the Common War, Commonwealth War Graves Commission excellently, despite um, funding cuts to them, of course, along with everything else in this age of austerity and COVID. Um, but the uh, Commonwealth War, War Graves Commission do fantastic work. When they find a body that's uh, dug up with a dog tag and can be identified, they make a new um, Portland stone head headset for it. And there is a, obviously on the Menin Gate and what have you, there's hundreds of thousands of uh, the missing of the Somme and Passion Girl uh, listed and so forth. And uh, yeah, really worth a visit if you um, have the chance to travel to Belgium once COVID does one, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, it won't be too long, my friends. So um, that's. Um, that's a great bit of Rupert Brook for a, uh, let's say, a Thursday afternoon here in Manchester, UK. Um, I'm just going to hit you, because I've done 17 minutes, I'm just going to hit you with two of Wilfred Owen's most famous poems. Um, the first called Anthem for Doom Doomed Youth, and you may well recognise this. So a little bit about Owen. Uh, he uh, was born in 1893 and died in 1918. Um, he... Uh, he began writing poetry as a teenager, uh, didn't publish, but um, became an English teacher in France. Um, he was, uh, um, he enlisted pretty, not quite as immediately as Rupert Brooks, but uh, pretty soon. And he fought on the Somme, uh, and um, well, all over from 16 to 18. Um, he was uh, hospitalised with shell shock, famously, and um, went to Craig Lockhart um, Hospital um, uh, under... Uh, Salim Rivers, who was a, sh a very clever shrink at te teaching terrible shell shock, met Sigrid Sassoon, another famous Persian novelist there, and um, uh, Pat Barker, who's written a very good um, book called Regeneration that's also been filmed pretty well. Um, it's, a, it's a trilogy of books all worth reading. Um, I in the Door, I uh, can't remember the other ones, but um, Regeneration, I think, was the first of it. Uh, and she's got some reoccurring um, characters, including a private that's sort of you know fictional whereas all the other characters are based on real life um, events and diaries and letters from from them so it's a very good novel the regeneration by pat barker check that out so without further ado um yeah i mean wilford Owen was very brave he got the military cross just before he was killed and he was killed by machine gun fire uh, near a canal in um, one of the 1918 advances towards the end of the war so very tragic in its own way, just like Rupert Brooke. So, yep, I'm going to do two poems of Rupert Brooke and let you return to your lives uh, a bit later than usual. It's been a long episode, so um, thank you for your patience and um, hope you um, enjoy these two poems from the marvellous Wilfred Owen. This is a very famous one, Anthem for Doomed Youth. What passing bells for these who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns, only the stuttering rifle's rapid rattle can patter out their hasty orisons. No mockeries for them, no prayers, nor bells, nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, 
the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells and bugles calling for them from sad shires. What kangles may be held to speed them all, not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes, shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pool. The flowers, their flowers, the tenderness of patient minds, and each slow dusk a drawing down of blinds. Sorry, I messed up the second to last line. I'm not sorry. I don't have any training in reading poetry. I'm not an actor. I've never done anything on stage at all. So apologies that I'm not the best reader. But I hope you enjoyed that nonetheless. Um, very famous, very angry. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, an anthem for doing the youth. Right? An absolute classic. Um, the second one I'm going to read is called The Unreturning. If we go in again. Suddenly night crushed out the day and hurled her remnants over cloud peaks, thunder walled. Then fell a stillness such as harks appalled when far gone dead return upon the world. There watched I for the dead, but no ghost woke. Each one whom life exiled I named and called. But they were all too far, all dumbed or thralled. Never one fared back to me or spoke. Then peered the indefinite unshapen dawn with vacant gloaming, sad as half-lit minds. The weak limbed hour when sick men's sighs are drained. And while I wandered on their being withdrawn, ganged by the smothering wing which none unbinds, I dreaded even a heaven with doors so chained. Beautiful sad poem. Um, a lot of... Um, mental health references. I'm not sure, I don't have the date of that poem, whether it um, was written before he went to suffer from uh, shell shock um, or not. Um, it's certainly, if it's, if it's uh, before, it's uh, very predictive of his fate. So he must have had a weighty mental health issues already. Okay, not the most cheerful of poems, um, but classics, I believe classics 1914. I haven't decided what I'm doing for episode four. I might go back to colonial stuff with uh, Rajya Kipling's Barrackdrum and Bullet Ballads, which are, are good fun, a bit more cheerful than that. Um, might go Second World War. No, I think I think I, I will go Barrackdrum Ballads. So tune in for episode four of this vlog, uh, sponsored by Skull Crusher Coffee. Um, uh, Death before decaf and all that shizzle. Uh, I've been Paul Hodges. Um, look out for Brutality in the Trenches coming to a bookstore near you at some point um, in the next decade. And um, if you want to join my mailing list, uh, please sign up at pdhodges at gmail.com. Um, it's, uh, yeah, Papa Delta, Hotel Oscar, Disco, Golf, Echo Sierra at gmail.com. Okay, look forward to hearing from you. And if you have any requests, I haven't I haven't sorted out the website yet. I do want to get one with a, you know, blog style with um, comments and embedded videos and all sorts of fancy stuff. I have bought Rapid Weaver for my Mac, but I, uh, I prefer reading poetry to messing around on the Mac all day. Okay, thanks for your viewing. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.